Welcome to the skill of performing a bed bath with a client. Now before we get started, of course, you want to perform your hand hygiene and provide as much privacy as possible. That is going to be key during the skill. Then you want to explain thoroughly to your client the procedure, and it's a great idea to get all of your equipment and your bed linens ready. And then we've got our basins here, and we want to fill those with warm water. Just a little tip for you, I like to do a basin with my soap for cleansing, and then I like to have another basin for rinsing my patient. Now once we get all of our equipment, such as all of our linen that we need, we can go ahead and apply our gloves. So when we do this, we want to then raise the bed to appropriate working height. Now this can be a little bit difficult because you see me and Dean here are quite two different heights, but make sure it's appropriate for both of you. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this up a little bit. All right, how's that for you, Dean? Good, thank you. Okay, perfect. So you just want to compromise where everybody's going to have good body mechanics. And one thing to keep in mind, as you can see here, now there are side rails on each side of the patient. Now this is very important for patient safety. However, you've got to keep good body mechanics in mind. The other thing to know is that if I drop a side rail, when you turn the patient, some patient's ability allows them to grab onto the side rail. So just make sure you assess and see what's best for you and the client. Now for me, because I'm a little bit shorter, this would be difficult for me to work over the side rail and I'm on the side of the bed. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this for working. And of course, I'm gonna stay here at the bedside. Now, it's great to position your client on their back for performing a bed bath. Some clients, however, need their head of bed up just a little bit to help their work of breathing. Now we can go ahead and remove those top linens and also expose the client. But providing privacy is so important and chilling and comfort, so we're gonna use a bath blanket here. So this is a typical bath blanket. Usually they're white, many facilities have them. But this is great just to provide privacy and chilling. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on the client. Okay. Perfect, thank you, Dean. So this is just my preference. I like to put the bath blanket on first. Then we can roll down the old linens because we're gonna change those later. And again, as you can see, this helps provide privacy to your client. And now we're going to move down the gown. Okay. So now that we've done this, and you see we're keeping the client nice and covered. Now when we start doing our bed bath, it's a great idea just to kind of think about like you would do an assessment. So go from head all the way down. So we're gonna start by the face and the head and the neck of our client. Now, here's one thing to remember anytime you're performing a bed bath. If your client can do as much as they can as possible, this is great because it helps promote independence and just gives them ownership of their own care. So now, just to get started, I'm gonna take my rinse cloth because this has no soap on it. And here's just a thought. Something that I like to do is that I have two basins here. I've got a basin with my washcloth with soap. Then I've got my basin here with my warm water with no soap for rinsing. So because I'm gonna start with the client's eyes, I'm gonna get my rinse rag. Then I'm gonna help clean the patient's eyes. So I'm gonna go start with one and clean one side of the patient's eye and their face. And here's a really important point to note. When you go to the other eye, please make sure you use a clean section of the washcloth. Clean the other side. Okay, there you go. Now that we've done this, I can go ahead and get my washcloth with my mild soap. It's a good idea to wring out any extra moisture just so it doesn't get all over your patient. Then I'm going to assist my client, if they need me to, to clean their face, head, and neck. And just be conscious about being gentle anytime you're giving a bed bath as well. Okay, so now that I've done this, because I've got mild soap on the patient's face, that can be a little bit irritating. So I'm going to use my rinse cloth and also rinse this off.
Thank you, Dean. And any time that we wash a client to prevent chilling and chafing, you want to pat dry as well. Okay. So now that we've done the face, head, and neck, we can move to the patient's anterior body of their chest, their arms, and their axilla. So just make sure here that you're really conscious about either a male or a female client or the patient's preference for privacy. Now it's okay per our client, per our discussion, that we're gonna go ahead and expose the chest. Now it's really helpful when you've got two people, you can have someone working on each side. So we're gonna start with our washcloth with mild soap. Then we're gonna start on the patient's chest. So we're just gonna clean thoroughly here on each side and kind of split the body, if you will. All right. Get the patient's arms. Make sure we clean well in the axilla area as well. Okay, perfect, thank you, Dean. Now we can get our rinse cloth and get all of that soap off. Now it's important here when you're bathing a client anytime to try to prevent from scrubbing too hard and irritating or tearing the skin. Perfect, thank you, Dean. Now again, don't forget to go ahead and dry thoroughly your client. Okay, perfect. So now that we've thoroughly dried our client, we're gonna go ahead and cover them back up to prevent chilling and provide privacy. Now we're gonna go ahead and clean the patient's abdomen. So we're gonna take our bath blanket and expose this particular area. So we're gonna clean their abdomen and their groin. Perfect. So as you've noticed here, we've left the old dirty gown. This just helps provide some more privacy and prevent chilling. And of course, we're gonna change this later. So for now, it just helps us with privacy. So now I'm gonna get my uh, washcloth with our soap. We're gonna clean the patient's abdomen. And then anywhere in their groin area too. Okay. Now we're going to make sure we rinse thoroughly. Okay. And then we're going to pat dry as well. Now, if your client's alert, it's a great time to just have a conversation, talk them through that, and explain the procedure as you're going. Okay, so now that we've done this, we can go ahead and recover up our client. And now we can take out that old gown. Thank you, Dean. Now we're gonna clean the patient's legs, their thighs, and down to their feet. So we're gonna take our washcloth with mild soap again. And then we're gonna start the anterior part of their thighs, all the way to the top, down all the way to their ankle and their feet. Now, this is an important point to note, and this is a great time to do a skin assessment with your client, and don't forget to wash in between their toes. All right, perfect, thank you. And of course, we're gonna rinse thoroughly. and make sure here to dry well. Sometimes extra moisture in between the client's uh, toes can definitely promote breakdown. Now, after we rinse, don't forget to dry. All right, perfect. 
Now if we wash the interior part of the body and then we can cover them here as well. Now we've covered our client to provide privacy and warmth, and now we're gonna start bathing our posterior side of our patient body. Now, since we're going to the posterior side, it's a great time now that you can change your basin water and make sure it's nice and warm and you get fresh soap and also fresh washcloths. So now we can go ahead and remove our gloves. We can perform our hand hygiene, and then we would put on new gloves at this time. So again, if we are dealing with our real patient, we can perform our hand hygiene and then make sure you don new gloves at this point. Now, this is the point to where, as you see, Dean's side rail is up. This is really helpful if your patient can, because when I roll the client to the side of Dean, if they're able to, they can grab onto that side rail and help steady themselves. But that's also why Dean's there, because he can help support the client in that position. And sometimes during a bed bath, your hands get a little bit moist and it's hard to get on those gloves. Okay, so now that we're ready, we can go ahead and help and roll the client to the side. Now we're gonna be exposing the posterior side of the client. And log rolling them's a great method to do so. Thank you, Dean. Mm -hmm. So as we're supporting the client here, now, if you can, this is a great time to put a, a towel underneath a patient's client or any extra linens just to help absorb any extra moisture. But later, make sure after a bed bath, it's a great time to change out the bed linens as well. Now that we've rolled the client to their side, we're exposing the posterior part of the patient's body. And again, great idea to leave the side rail up and Dean's there supporting them. So I'm gonna get my washcloth with mild soap. And this is a great time to catch maybe the back of the head or the neck that you may have missed on the anterior side and thoroughly cleanse the patient's posterior back. Now I'm going from the back all the way down to the legs on the posterior side because it's a good practice to get a new washcloth for the, the patient's buttocks and not reuse that on the rest of the body. Okay, now once we've washed thoroughly, of course, we wanna make sure we rinse. And this is a great time to perform a skin assessment on your patient. And now make sure to pat dry. Okay, thank you, Dean. And we're gonna go ahead and roll the patient on their back at this point. Thank you, Dean. Okay, so now that we've got our patient in the supine position, this is a great time to talk about peri care during a bed bath for our client. Now, when we're talking about a male versus a female client, there's a little variation that you wanna consider. And also don't forget that when we're starting to talk about cleansing for peri area, this is a great time to change out the basin water as well and put on new gloves. So let's talk about the difference between a male and a female client when we're cleansing. So just to kind of walk you through this, we're gonna go ahead and expose the client. Okay, so when we're talking about cleansing the client, it's important that I go ahead, and if you remember, I've got my basin with mild soap, and then I've got my rinse. So we wanna go ahead and wring out our washcloth. Now, when we're talking about cleansing a male client, it's important to make sure we clean down the shaft of our patient all the way around our patient. It's also really important to make sure, especially at the meatus, that we are cleansing and using a different part of the washcloth each time to prevent contamination. 
The other thing I want you to consider when we are talking about a male client and we're, and we're providing peri care here, it's really important that if the patient has, has not been circumcised, that we want to make sure that we retract the foreskin, we cleanse thoroughly around it. Then after we do that, we would make sure we get our rinse cloth and make sure we rinse thoroughly. Then after we did that, we of course want to make sure also that we're going to dry thoroughly. Now anytime that you have an uncircumcised client and you cleanse here, it's really important that we clean this area, we rinse and dry thoroughly, and please make sure that we put the foreskin back. So that's really important to promote circulation and comfort for your client. Now that's talking about a male client. Now, if we're going to talk about a female client, there's some other considerations we want to talk about. So when we talk about a female client, it's really important that when we get our washcloth, this is with our soap, that we want to write wipe front to back. It's also important that with each swipe, I'm using a clean part or a new washcloth. So that way we prevent contamination. Now, once we've done this, of course, we want to make sure we rinse as well. And of course, it's really important to pat dry. Now, that's some considerations with a female client. Don't forget front to back. Now, just a key point to remember, anytime you're talking about peri care with a female or a male client, it's really important that drying step because excess moisture here can contribute to excoriation and a lot of chafing for your client. So now we can go ahead and complete our procedure. So once we performed our peri care, it's a great time to remove our gloves and perform hand hygiene. Now, anytime if the patient wants moisturizer or a particular lotion, it's a great idea to switch out your gloves and put on new ones. So once we've completed this step, now here's where we want to go ahead and change out our linens for our patient. Now, as you can imagine, there's some water and soap that got on there, and just to help them feeling a little bit better and get clean linen on, we're going to dress the patient in our gown. Okay. Now while dressing the client, we can just use that bed bath blanket as well for privacy. Okay. Thank you, Dean. Now once we've changed out the gown, this is a great time to help with making a clean new occupied bed for your patient and change out all those linens. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Now, if the patient has a preference, we can help them brush and comb their hair and perform any extra hygiene practices for them that they prefer. Then, of course, make sure that you position the client for comfort. And then before we leave, make sure your side rail is up and ensure that this is in the lowest position for safety. Now, don't forget for future use, you've got your basins here that we use for cleansing and for rinsing. Make sure you empty, clean these, and disinfect as well. Now, here's a key point that a lot of the times when we perform a bed bath, these are dirty linens. There could be incontinent episodes or blood and body fluids on these linens. So it's really important that you follow your agency's infection control measures. Now, many times there's a specific linen bag that we'll use in a specific place in the facility, we place all dirty linens. Now we can remove our gloves, perform our hand hygiene, and document the procedure. Thank you for watching.